Hello, everyone, and welcome to BioC 2021 and uh, this uh, session. We will start this, the, the talk shortly, but first, a few housekeeping items. Uh, if you have any question, please enter them in the Q&A tab on the right of, of your screen. You will also have the ability to upvote questions uh, that you want to, that you would like to be uh, to have answered, even if you didn't ask them. If you would like to ask your question live, please use the raise hand feature, and uh, we will bring you on stage. There are a variety of emoticons which I've seen. Uh, I noticed people have found, uh, so they're available for you to give feedback uh, as well. And if for some reason uh, you have to leave early, a video of this session will be available a couple of hours after the session has completed. I, uh, my name is Kevin Ruelbrecht. I'm a computational biologist at the University of Oxford, and I will give uh, I will present this introduction session to workshops. Uh, let me go into presenter mode, sharing the screen, Chrome tab, and here we go. Yeah, that looks okay. So yeah, welcome again, BioC21, Introduction to Workshops. Uh, so this, is, this session is mostly to tell you a little bit about how workshops are organized or uh, orchestrated, we, we, should, we should say, and how as users, so both, uh, both from a developer's perspective and uh, for users who will uh, launch instances of the workshops, uh, I, I will show you a bit of all that. So the, the workshops are run on the orchestra platform with a great many thanks to Sean Davis for implementing here on the right. Uh, so he developed and maintained the code that runs the orchestra platform. While the workshops themselves are developed as R packages hosted on GitHub on individual repositories maintained and developed by individual workshop authors. And again, I want to thank all the authors from current and past sessions of the um, editions of the Bioconductor Conference for putting so much work into those workshops. Uh, since they are hosted on GitHub and uh, maintained by authors uh, each work and developed as R packages, it means that each workshop can be checked and built using GitHub Actions. So again, as users, uh, users don't need to worry about all those things, but the, those are very nice functionality that uh, any of you could be interested in, and I encourage you to, to visit the links. Uh, so GitHub Actions essentially uh, take the package from the GitHub repository, run some checks, and build a package down website, which is deployed on GitHub pages, and uh, people can browse the, the vignettes of the, the workshop without having to run it themselves. Uh, that can only take them so far. And a second uh, artifact that's produced by the, GitHub, uh, by the GitHub action as part of the workshop is a Docker image that has two purposes. One is that people who have uh, installed Docker on their computer can pull those images and run the workshop locally. But those Docker images are also the primary uh, piece of, uh, of software that is used to run the workshop lives, live during the conference on the Orchestra platform. Uh, so what is your, the, or the philosophy of the Orchestra platform is to provide easy access to standard compute environments. So it is a cloud-run uh, instance, uh, or a cloud-based platform that runs instances of the workshops in the form of Docker images. Uh, it minimizes the potential for a technical hurdle, so people do not have to install everything themselves. Uh, Bioconnector runs all this for them, and all you need is a web browser to uh, log to create a session. Uh, it, the Orchestra platform collects and exposes workshop materials in one standardized platform, so it doesn't matter that uh, developers, uh, that the workshop live in different GitHub repository. Once they're added to the platform, they can be run there. Uh, it empowers workshop authors to manage detail of the workshop preparation and interaction by users uh, themselves. So the workshop authors do not depend on anyone to essentially update their materials. Every time they push an update to their GitHub repository, and this, uh, this update gets converted into a new Docker image. And the, as soon as the Docker image is built, it becomes available. Uh, the, the Orchestra platform will fetch the latest image of each workshop. 
um, so without any further input from the biconductor uh, maintainers. It ensures that workshop materials use industry standard and tooling available to everyone. And again, the orchestral platform scales from a single user uh, launching an, a workshop any time of the day uh, to thousands of users seamlessly. Uh, we'll see uh, the statistics in a subsequent slide that uh, in past conferences, we had up to 500 uh, participants in the conferences running instances in parallel. So a little illustration of how all, it all fits together. So uh, again, from a developer perspective, so the workshop materials are uh, hosted on GitHub as a source, uh, as a source code, as an R package. So the first artifact is the repository itself, which people using dev tools or remotes can install the workshop as an R package on their own computer. The fact it's an R package means that you can also run test and continuous integration, continuous development workflows, which is what GitHub Action essentially is. Uh, and speaking of GitHub Action, so the two outputs that are produced automatically by GitHub Action on every update to the repository is one, the website, uh, the package down website that contains the vignette and the documentation and the Docker image. So the website gives an immediate online presence that can be uh, browsed online, as I mentioned. Uh, and I forgot what SEO means. Uh, apologies for that, but it, oh, uh, for search engine optimization. So the fact that it's a website published on GitHub uh, means that it gets indexed by Google. And so if, if you Google about a specific topic, the, the, the workshop might actually come up on top of the, the Google results. Uh, and then the Docker image, as I mentioned, can be deployed locally on your own machine or uh, for the purpose of the conference is deployed via uh, via orchestra. So how does it look? So as I mentioned, so the GitHub repository, this is a workshop template that Sean uh, uh, prepared so that uh, current, uh, past, current, and future workshop contributors can essentially just uh, use this template, uh, fork their own repository, and update the materials for their own uh, workshop. Uh, so Every update to this GitHub repository gets uh, creates this package down website, which is hosted. Um, so if the repository was Sean Davy slash build a biosy workshop, the package down website lives on seandavy.github.io slash build a biosy workshop. And it looks like that. And you can see that the, the vignettes that are in the R package gets converted into articles. And you can have a readme page uh, to essentially give an overview of the workshop. So this is one of the outputs. And the second output is Docker image, uh, which leaves uh, for the, the workshop template at this address. And this is where uh, people would run Docker pull to pull it locally. And this is where orchestra, the Orchestra platform pulls it from when, as a user, you'll see from, uh, so in 45 minutes, the first workshops, when people will launch their own instance, it will fetch the latest image of the relevant workshop from the, the Docker page. So those are the two main outputs. And as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, so this has been proven at scale. So BioC 2020 had 500 participants and 22 workshops. And in total, those 22 workshops were served 1,819 uh, separate times to uh, those 500 participants, or maybe multiple times uh, for uh, enthusiasts. Uh, for BioC 2021, uh, we set up on the on the conference website this page that helped us uh, monitor the status of workshops as they were being developed. So if you visit this link, uh, the link will take you, I believe, to either the GitHub or the package uh, to the package down. Then you can go to GitHub using the the little GitHub icon in the source. You can go to the Docker repository for this workshop. And uh, the, the little badge here uh, says, what is the status of the latest uh, build and check? So I can uh, reassure you that we've all tested them uh, and they all work for, uh, for this conference. Um, right, so this is from a developer perspective. And so uh, again, I encourage you to ask questions. I'll get to them uh, at the end uh, in, in a few slides. 
Uh, from a user perspective, accessing workshop, the orchestra platform lives at this address, app.orchestra.cancerdatasci.org. So if you ha don't have an account yet, uh, so the first time you will need to log in to get started, you will see this page and you'll need to log in. That will give you the choice between logging with your uh, Google credential, a Google account, or signing with an email. So uh, that is down to personal uh, preference. Once you've signed in, or if you already have an account, when you visit the App Orchestra website, you will land on this page that lists all the workshops. Uh, they are uh, a, a larger number than 14. So this 14 here is because I've already uh, filtered for the 2021 uh, workshops, and there are 14 of them. So for this conference, there are actually 11. So the, the, tw the search box can help you identify more rapidly the workshop that you're looking for. So you can search them by name, or here, uh, what I do recommend is search them by date, and then you will uh, have uh, one version of each workshop, essentially, and just pick the one that uh, is relevant to the workshop you're following. Um, so the but you don't want to click on the workshop link itself, which will take you to the source. You want to click on the launch button, um, which will take you to uh, this page that will ask you to patiently wait for your own workshop instance to be uh, created. So what happens there is in the background, the orchestra platform will initialize a cloud uh, instance of the workshop. So that might take uh, between a few seconds to, uh, to a minute. Uh, so just do not refresh the page, simply wait. Uh, this at the bottom is, is a loading bar. So you'll see the, the blue bar just uh, move from left to right uh, again and again. Uh, I will. I need to emphasize that. Uh, so this, what will happen is you will get an R Studio instance running in the cloud. Uh, to, you will still need to sign in with a, a dummy username and password. Both are R Studio. Uh, so just remember uh, username, password, R Studio. And once the the page is ready, your workshop will be available at this address. So in the next slide, actually, uh, I have once the workshop is ready, the bar will disappear and will be replaced by this launch workshop. So uh, I encourage you to click the Launch Workshop button. Do not visit the address before. Uh, there's no point visiting the address before you get the button. And the link and the button take you to the same place. So yeah, when everything is ready, remember the R Studio and click the Launch Workshop. That will take you uh, in your web browser to this new page. So type R Studio as a username, R Studio as the password, and then sign in. If you're using Google Chrome, uh, you will you will get every time. There's no way. I haven't found a way to get rid of this. You will just have uh, this warning. But this is just because it's a cloud instance and a dummy password. Uh, so uh, you just ignore the warning, click OK. And what you will get finally is your R Studio session running on your very own uh, instance in the cloud. So. Uh, I will reiterate this at the end of the presentation, but do not share uh, your uh, the address of your own uh, workshop, and do not if someone is sharing their screen, do not vi visit that address because everyone has a unique URL. Uh, what I'm trying to show here, I hope the resolution is good on your screen, is the vignette folder. So because the the package, the the workshop is distributed with the source code of the package you get everything for free, but you do not need to worry about anything but the vignette, which is where the authors have prepared the uh, the materials. So if you open that folder, you'll see that there's one or more RMD files. So at that point, the, the workshop author, uh, during the session, the workshop author will guide you uh, to the relevant uh, vignette that you need to follow. So if you open it here, uh, I've opened it. So you've got the, the typical uh, R Markdown document. And so, According to the, the workshop and how the author decided to deliver it, you can follow it in the R Markdown work, uh, file and uh, run the code from the, the R Markdown or type it in the console or you know play around yourself. So the, the R Studio is your own. You can open an R script. You can interact with that session however you want uh, to, to follow the session at your own pace. 
And yes, that, that will be my last slide saying, uh, reiterating that uh, on the previous slide, you, you've seen uh, that I had a URL with an alphanumeric uh, unique signature. So one URL was my instance at that point in time. So if I run the workshop again now, which is you know several hours later uh, after the, my screenshot, I will even I will get uh, get a different uh, URL. Uh, and so one URL is one instance for one user. So if you navigate to a URL of someone else, it will actually kick them out of that session. And when they refresh their page, it will kick you out of the session and you can play that forever after. So avoid that and just uh, yeah, get, get your own session, follow at your own pace, and the rest will really be up to the uh, workshop author. But so yeah, now that I've gone a bit through all the sort of uh, technical part, uh, just remember to enjoy the workshops uh, and the conference. If you need any help, so we are around uh, the conference platform, but there's also a Slack channel on the um, in in the Bioconductor Slack workspace. You can actually go on the channel uh, BioC2021. So this will reach everyone who's following the who's subscribed to this channel. But uh, most of the, the conference community is there and uh, ready to answer. And one last thing, again, to I want to acknowledge the, the work of uh, Sean Davis. Uh, and if you want to uh, look at the code that's running the orchestra platform, uh, you can browse it on GitHub at this address. Uh, yeah. All right. So if my um, co-host for this session uh, I, I will have a look at the Q and A, and if my co-hosts want to point me to any specific question, uh, all right. So, how can we access the links for GitHub? Are the presentation shared before uh, the which links? Uh, are the presentation shared before the sessions? Uh, I can probably invite you on stage. Uh, yeah, that's, how does that work? Uh, um, Kevin, Kevin, I I did post an answer to this one already in the chat, just to the link that you provided on the slide, the workshop status slide. Okay, yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so I guess those links on GitHub, right? Are the because the presentations are something different. So if the workshop author has a presentation available, that is typically not part of the sorry workshop source code so you will uh, you will discover the start of the session whether the, the person wants to give a presentation first but uh, that is good uh, thanks Levi for for sharing the link so yes the bioc21.bioconductor.org workshop status will uh, contains all the links that will take you to the different source code uh, docker images and the pre-compiled package down website with all the documentation uh, it seems that the community BioC channel can only be accessed with certain email domains. Uh, that rings a bell, but I thought that was sort of solved. Uh, yes, thanks, Fede. Uh, so Federico answered in the Q and A, uh, but there is I'll post that again in the in the chat. Uh, so you can actually register yourself. Uh, on the bioc minus community dot app dot com, that will uh, take you to a sign up uh, page where you should be able to register with any uh, email address from any domain. Um, meeting. What else do we? Uh... Maybe what, one other thing I'll just add is that um, these these orchestra instances they can take a little while to start up if you have several hundred people all doing it at the same time. So it's not a bad idea to go ahead and open yours in advance of a workshop that you're going to to start, and that way you already have the your own URL and your own instance started. Uh, it's an auto scaling system, and when it will scale to hundreds of people, but it takes it can take five minutes to to scale up when a lot of people try to do it at the same time. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I've demonstrated everything through slides and screenshot, right? I think it's a bit too. Um, 
I, I wouldn't do it live directly. I mean, we've got some spare time. So if anyone wants a demonstration of one example workshop live, uh, we, we can do that. But um, unless the, there are other questions. Uh, uh, I think this slide link does expect a domain specific. Okay. Uh, oh, Q and A. There we go. Uh -huh. What was your? F <laughs> uh, oh, hang on. Uh, Matt will get to that. It's just Mariana. Can someone reshare the orchestra link? Yeah, in I I should actually share also the. Ah, I'm not sure I can share this, the link to the slides uh, that I'm presented right now because they're living in a folder. I should make sure that they're published somehow. Uh, so the orchestra app. Ah, someone beat me to it. Well done, um, Adrian. Uh, what happens if I. Okay, great. Uh, share and. I will give access to everyone with the link. Anyone on the thread can view. That sounds great. I don't want them to edit. Uh, copy link and here we go. So, can we post some feedback on social where to find on the website? Um, I made a short URL for your slides. Oh, great! Uh, I've sent the helpful. It yeah, is, I've sent the full uh, link, which is a bit horrible. Uh, let me just, it's bit.ly slash bioc2021 intro workshops. I guess I could have made it a bit shorter. Bioc21, and how, what's the rest? Bioc2021 workshops. Or sorry, bioc20, I, I'm typing it into the chat. Okay, there. yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not able to join the Slack channel with my registered mail account. Uh, that is odd. So hero. Your domain. Hmm. Unfortunately, I can't test the uh, Slack channel myself because I'm already registered. Uh, okay, that is one to dig further. Uh, yeah. So incognito is not a bad idea. It's just that I need uh, I need to use an email address that's not registered yet. So let's try. But uh, my Oxford one is not. That's not going to be because uh, Oxford is probably going to be recognized if we're talking about domains that are. Uh, Working. I uh, would we'll check your email. Okay, so when I put I put the email address, I clicked. I'm not a robot. I agree to the code of conduct, and the button just became green, saying "Would we'll check your email." So, uh, what happens in my emails? Uh, I had them closed to avoid notifications. So here come the notification. Uh, and I get an email that says, Marcel Ramos has invited you to work with them in Slack. So thanks, Marcel, for setting that up. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so far, so good. But I'm guessing that an ox.ac.uk uh, domain is Pretty uh, well recognized, and unfortunately for the for the testing purposes, uh, I'm gonna pull out my old Hotmail address for that. Uh, so, leave I rem uh, just like wake me up if there's uh, more pressing questions. Right, I'm just trying stuff. <laughs> Okay, my hotmail is asking uh, asking me a recapture. So uh, maybe that's I'm on the right track. Get my invite. 
Yeah, even that one. Okay. Uh, boom, boom. I'm not able to read. Maybe we could do that in uh, outside this session. I would say um, to keep. So if if you contact me separately, uh, so we we can trial this feature of the the Airmeet platform where people can have one to one chats and maybe use one of the booth. So uh, who was it? It was Dinesh. So if if you just message me uh, directly, we we can try and figure that one out together in a in a separate session. Um, Oh, and Rohit. OK, I'm catching up with messages. So Rohit sent an, an invite. Uh, so you might actually have access. Uh, and Aidin, I'm not sure if it's a specific channel that people are trying to join. I think they're blocked at joining the entire workspace in the first place. Uh, for the Slack email took several minutes. OK. I like the, the community. <laughs> Community help. It's a good start to the conference, friends. Are you uh, able to see the questions that pop up on the screen when we? I, I'm post scrolling them through there? the chat, so I'm kind of out of touch. Uh, the point is that the, the chat and the Q and A right are separate, so what I'm catching with one, it, I'm losing track of the other. But I, I'm but probably gonna. But yeah? it shows in the in the session, like right in the middle of the session when we put one up there, so you don't have to use the chat and Q and A. So the question we have right now is, can we oh. save? Our, our sessions info from orchestra. Yeah, actually, I didn't realize that this was actually updating. Uh, I noticed that when I op when I finished the presentation, it went straight to the screen saying uh, post any question, and I didn't realize it updated with the question. So yeah, can we save our, our session info for orchestra? Um, so the orchestra, if you save it as a so if you save a file in your cloud instance, that file uh, that file is going to disappear when the cloud instance dies, right? But I don't know if I mean. If you have a cloud bucket, so sort of a, an online storage space, uh, uh, it maybe you can essentially save on a remote server. So that would be uh, I haven't done that in ages. But the way uh, you would download the file into an R session, you can probably upload a file from an R session to an online repository. But yeah, um, that is not the Kevin, primary purpose, I would say. Yeah. Kevin, there there is an easier solution to that though. Um, in the file browser in the bottom right hand pane of of uh, our studio, you can select files and yeah. click export and download them to your computer. Yeah, so that, that can be your RMD file, your R session, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah, that that would be that would probably be better. So it depends what you want to save, right? But if the R sessions are well, if there are a bunch of objects and you save them in an R data file, something like that. But yeah, as as long as you save the file, yeah, it behaves like a regular R Studio, apart from the export button, which in this case means download. Um, yeah, that I haven't tried it myself. Uh, I suppose yeah, but that's a good idea. Uh, I don't know if do are you expecting it to work, Levi, or did you test it yet yourself? Yes, I've done it. Okay. Yeah, um, and I should add that it's on. I think the orchestra to do list to offer a possibility to connect a persistent disk, but it's not implemented yet. And in the meantime, you just have to download any files that you want to keep, and then you can upload them again in your next session. And just yeah, remember that after eight hours, when it's not in use, um, it's going to be destroyed. If you're using it, you can actually use it for longer than eight hours. Mm. Okay. I, I guess I can't guarantee that. I've observed that. <laughs> That's maybe out, outside of the documentation, but I've, I've never seen it actually cut me off after eight hours while I was using it. Mm. OK. Um, how's, oh, the chat is going well, and it seems like it's helping. Uh, people have managed to, um, to help each other. Uh, Aside from actually asking question, I guess we can actually ask the community. So Matt asked the question, what was your favorite moment from a past BIOC conference? So I can answer it myself, but I can, I, I'm guessing it, it, it would also be nice for if people wanted in the chat box to uh, people who attended past conferences, if they want to post what their favorite moment was. But I guess for me, and since we're talking about workshop, I'm, I'm strongly biased having given a couple of workshops in past conferences already. 
and and that was definitely my my favorite moment as as a workshop author to see the to interact with uh with people and asking exactly that kind of question right you 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 give people a tool and they come back to you with not just questions and bugs but about can you take it one step further and oh can you do this or can you do that and actually right now we can't just because we have invested the time and that just gives you the next push uh to develop it and make it even better so it, it, it's what I really love about the, the, the BioC conference is, is you come to present something and you leave knowing how you can make it even better. Uh, we'll, okay, in the chat, I see Julia asking uh, if this has been mentioned before, will recording of the talks be available after? Yes. So uh, we're expecting them to be available within a few hours uh, after the, the session has ended just for the the video to essentially be made and uh, and available. So that wasn't in the Q&A, it was in, in the chat. Uh, am I still sharing? Oh, right. I can probably just stop sharing because the, the Q&A has disappeared from the, oh, there we go. Basically, uh, Bursi 2020 helped me switch from a package user to a developer. I actually use a lot of package, including package done after the conference. Yep, clapping too. Uh, thanks for hits. That that was so an answer that came in the Q and A. Uh, it's actually a nice way because then your answers come on screen, which is I don't need to read them out. Uh, but Federico, among favorite development developer day sessions. Uh, they are so that's I'm also looking forward for conferences coming back in person uh, for those developer day sessions which are really a, a beautiful way to to network uh, and more easily than online I have to say Jenny meeting oops that was quick uh, meeting people from all over the world pack, developer of packages that I use heavily it is yeah so we will have booth and tables also where people and uh, a few networking sessions during the conferences during the breaks where uh, I encourage you to kind of hang around the the tables in the in the lobby of the the Airmeet platform and yes yeah, spot people that you'd be uh, that that you would like to chat with um, you also have, uh, I think you can spot people logged in the conference platform and direct message them and organize a little chat together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the sticker exchange platform. Yeah. I really liked the, the the sort of the less structured sessions, like the meet the CAB, meet the TAB, meet the core team, the birds of a feather, the awards ceremony, all of these different kinds of things were kind of what, uh, mm. what, I don't know, felt more social and some of the hanging out at tables in the, in the lounge with people. Yeah all of these informal areas. Uh, yeah, the, the bird of a feather that we have also. And last year, the Biosea challenge was actually a nice way. We ended up with three tables in the in the booth. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Uh, I think it will get introduced later in the conference again. But yeah, little challenges for the community, by the community, for the community, and people essentially really raised some interest. and. Uh, spontaneously created tables on the the Airmeet platform to discuss things close to their heart and find people with a shared interest um, to to start initiatives together and that's how uh, packages emerge nicely. Uh, extra special. We do have thanks, Aidin. We do have an extra special twentieth anniversary hack sticker this year as Bioconductor is celebrating their twenty uh, year anniversary. Uh, started in tw uh, 2001. Uh, I'll, uh, if I can just 
all this. We also have a little uh, a slide deck with um, Bioconductor 20 years slides. I'll send that in the chat. Uh, that, uh, again, it's, so this is a repository. I should essentially send the link to the deployed version that so the the community so people having been around the the back next project from uh, for a long time uh, added photos from past conferences pretty much the past 20 years and everyone's welcome to essentially go and visit and have a have a feel of what back conductor has been uh, how it looked like over time um in there and if you have yourself images uh, or memories from past conferences, you're more than welcome to, to keep adding them to, to the slides. It's a GitHub repository. Uh, just send a pull request and, uh, and we'll merge it and uh, help you get the, the, the photos in there. What, oh, PDT Pacific, what time? Uh, sorry, um, oh, daylight, there we go. I'm European centric, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will also have a formal introduction to the conference. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Levi. So it's in the chat. So I'm not sure how much people are actually looking at it, uh, all the, the messages scrolling in the chat. But yes, the, we're, we're starting to introduce a little bit BioC 2021 now in advance. But the, the official uh, talk you'll see in your own time zone on the uh, conference website, where is. Oh, the uh, conference website schedule. I will paste that here. Uh, a nice feature of the schedule on the um, BIOC 2021 website is that you can, uh, it should automatically set in your time zone, but at the bottom of the, um, of the schedule, I can share the, uh, I'm still sharing this one. Uh, share screen, Chrome tab, and which of the Chrome tab is it? I've got way too many. I, I'll, I'm going to share the Windows gonna, at this point. Uh, yeah, so this is on the Bioconductor website. And down here, it spots London for me, close enough. And if you click here, you can essentially erase it and put, put it in a specific time and all. So I don't want to do that. I'm happy with London. But if it's not in the right time zone for you, um, feel free to switch around and the, the schedule will look in the, at the proper time for you. Uh, Bavia, I just joined in now. And I'm very late. Can you please summarize the intro? Uh, that, yes, I can. So that was a minute ago. So change the time zone, change my calendar, OK. Uh, oh yeah, the, Matt, good point. The slides are pinned at the top. So, oh, there's a Q and A. Sorry, I'm all over the place right now. So, oh no, that's just. I think I get a notification when they get ticked off. So, right. But well, yeah. So, as a brief uh, rehash, maybe for uh, who is it? Uh, for the person who joined recently, you want to go to uh, apporchestra.cancerdatasci.org, uh, log in uh, with Google or your email, find out a uh, subset the workshop for 2021 is a nice trick. It's not the ultimate solution, but it's a nice trick to get down to 14 uh, workshops. And then you can find them by name. And then when, uh, when you click the launch button, you will get to this page, wait for, uh, it's asking you to, to wait. And once it's ready, you click the launch workshop button. Keep in mind the username password that is RStudio. Type the username and password in the page that will open. If you're using Google Chrome, ignore the warning. That's uh, completely fine and expected. And you will get your RStudio session where you can follow the vignettes. So down here, you can open it up there and then follow the instruction of the package author, uh, whether you want to run oops, the, the code from the, the R markdown or you want to type it in the console. 
And that's pretty much it. So respect uh, other people's URL. So here, for I've screenshotted mine. It looks like this horrible alphanumeric string. Uh, do not share this one with anyone else because it's yours. For eight hours, I believe that it is mentioned. Yeah, make note of your personal URL, which you can reuse for up to eight hours. After eight hours, uh, the cloud instance is uh, interrupted. Uh, are uh, killed, and you would have to start a new session. I do not know off of the top of my head if you are actively using the session after eight uh, at the eight hour threshold whether it's gonna uh, uh, keep it alive. But I don't know anyone who's been doing a workshop for more than eight hours consecutively. <laughs> um, excellent point from Levi. So the we have two different types of workshops. Uh, so the long workshop are expected to be interactive. So uh, you're encouraged to follow to open your instance and follow along uh, with the workshop authors telling you what to do uh, or guiding you through the process. And we have a short workshop which uh, are actually uh, package demos this year. So where you're not expected to follow along, you can if you uh, if you wish. But those are more about the. Uh, they're intended to be for package authors to essentially demonstrate uh, the, the the package through sc their screen sharing. Um, but you are entirely welcome to um, uh, to follow along. We are slowly reaching time. So last chance, I would say, uh, last two, three minutes uh, opportunities for, uh, for questions. Uh, only some of the presentation we have. Oh, where did that? I think what Vince is, Schultz is getting at, only some of the presentations will have orchestra sessions. Only the long workshops have orchestra sessions. Um, the short workshops, the package demos don't have their own orchestra sessions, which doesn't prevent you from using those. It's just that the, the short format of those workshops yeah. isn't, isn't intended for an interactive workshop because it's a short period of time or the demonstration. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't asked the, the, the authors of the short workshops to essentially set up the entire workshop uh, and Docker image. So it won't be listed under the orchestra. So you would have to install the package yourself locally uh, to, to follow along. So yeah, if, if you want to do that, you probably want to do it in advance to make sure that all the packages are installed and uh, you don't fall behind. I mean, yeah, you're, you're ready to go when the session starts. Sure. Uh, oh, a more general question I see in the Q&A about updating the profile on the Airmeet platform. Uh, all right, so since I'm on Airmeet here, I'm not exactly sure whether I can, uh, I'd rather not navigate the Airmeet website myself in case I get bumped out of the <laughs> of the session <laughs> since I'm on screen, but um, there should be, so at the top right corner, you, sh you have uh, your name. Uh, oh, you can only change the language or exit, or at least that's what I can do from here. I am sure uh, the problem is in my Airmeet profile, I've created it last year already, so I haven't had to change anything. Somehow it's set up. Uh, I can't remember where I've added the information, computational biologies, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there are people from Airmeet on table one. Oh, uh, good point from Simone. Uh, there are people from Airmeet on table one in the, in the lobby uh, that could help you with that. Uh, and Matt posted that you can go in settings and update profile. Do you want to specify where the settings are? Because I was expecting them in the menu from my uh, icon in the top right corner, but I don't see settings, I only see language. Oh, I have, under settings, I have customized event, update profile, audio and video settings, dashboard, language, logout. Okay. All right, I, I, I don't know, when I click on my, oh, hold on a second. 
view and update your AMI profile information. So maybe it's because I'm screen sharing and talk and, and speaker here that it might hide settings because if I click on settings, I'm sure I'm gonna get kicked out of the of the of the call. But yeah, so you should be able to find those settings up there. Uh, okay. Oops, can I see the answer to a question? Uh, okay, Bianca, we're gonna repost it. So the answer answers typically were posted back into the main chat. And I haven't looked at this one in a while, but I'm gonna guess that it has uh, moved quite a lot since the question was asked. So I've just posted the link to the orchestra app again now in the main chat. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, one fifty one. So we're one minute past our fifty minutes. So if hopefully we've answered most uh, all your questions at this point, and it, I'm, it, it's a nice place to leave it and give you a ten minute break before uh, the workshop start. Uh, I can just hang around a minute more if there's any last minute thing. Uh, oh, in the chat, I want to know what is the function of table? Yes, oh, I, I mentioned them uh, without explaining. So yes, tables are essentially small chat rooms. So uh, I think a table can have at most eight participants. It's somewhere between uh, four and eight. So there's, uh, there's a settings. They so actually can't, they can expand now. Oh, beyond that, okay. Yeah auto expanding excellent so um, yeah yeah maybe i'll just add to that they're like a chat room but one other difference they have is once you take a seat at a table um anytime you're not in a session um you're, you'll still have your seat there so so it, it sort of makes it easy to go back and see the same people between sessions uh, each time as soon as you go to the lounge and find yourself back at a table with the same people. Oh, you get pulled back at the same table, right? If uh, after a session, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, those, I encourage you to play around a bit with the platform, uh, see how uh, there, there, there's no, <laughs> there's nothing like experience, right? You, you, we, we can explain it, but it, it's really. Try try around, and if things don't work the way you expect them to, then uh, just send us a message or try to uh, talk to the people from Airmeet who are on table one and, and there to help. OK, so I think I'll close thanking everyone. Uh, so more than 150 people who joined the, the session, or at least 150 people left. At this point, so thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you enjoy the the workshops and the conference uh, as a whole. Uh, it's always a highlight of the year for me, and I'm really happy to see so many people around for for this 2021 edition of the of the conference. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, everyone. Nice work. Yeah, that was great. So it's still recording.